हेलो एवरीवन आई एम योर फ्रेंड शादाब इमाम एंड वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग आर लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन ऑपरेशंस रिसर्च सो टुडे आई हैव केम अप विद अनदर वेरिएशन इन द ट्रांसपोर्टेशन प्रॉब्लम सो लेट अस क्विकली सी व्हाट द प्रॉब्लम इज सो द प्रॉब्लम सेज दैट अ कंपनी हैज डिसाइडेड टू इनिशिएट द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ सम और ऑल ऑफ द न्यू फोर न्यू प्रोडक्ट्स एट थ्री ब्रांच प्लांट्स विद एक्सेस प्रोडक्शन कैपेसिटी Plant two cannot produce product two. Okay, find the quantities of production at the optimum. The cost per unit of the production is given below. So here we have three plants and four number of products. And it specifically mentions that plant two cannot produce product two. So here. in cost matrix it has been shown by dash that means plant 2 cannot produce product 2 clear so first of all the first thing we notice is that the supply and demand are not equal so let us see what is the total supply and total demand so we can see here 40 Plus fifty ninety plus thirty hundred and twenty. This is hundred and twenty, and this is fifty plus thirty eighty plus forty hundred and twenty plus hundred and forty. So, so the the demand here is hundred and forty, and the supply here is hundred and twenty. That means we have an unbalanced problem. So we will convert this unbalanced problem into balanced form. And one more thing is there that plant two cannot produce product two. So for this, what we will do is we will provide here a penalty which will avoid the allocation in plant two for product two. So we can take the value of uh, up to infinity. Okay. So we may take the value infinity here as a penalty. Or what we will do is we will take the value m. That is, m is the large positive value. Just as we have used m in the simplex, where we have used big M method. So we can put the value m here, or we can put directly value infinity as a penalty. So what I have done here is I have taken the value m, which is a large, very large positive value. so that our allocation should not be in this particular cell and we know that there will be a difference in these two so the difference is 20 that means i need to add another row having the supply 20 so i have already added a dummy row here which shows a supply of 20 now if we calculate the total supply it is equals to 140 and the total demand is also equals to 140 now when our problem is in balanced form we will try to solve the transportation problem so in the first part we will solve the basic feasible solution and we will solve this by vogel's approximation method so let us quickly move on to this matrix this is the cost matrix we have obtained here and for this we will be solving for basic feasible solution by vogel's approximation method so let us start solving so in vogel's approximation method we will calculate the penalties for each cell uh, for for each row and each column so let us start from here the minimum value is 0 and the next minimum value is 3 so the penalty here is 3 similarly here minimum value is 0 and the next minimum is 4 so the penalty here is 4 here the minimum value is 0 next minimum is 4 here also penalty will be 4 here the minimum value is 0 and the next minimum is 2 so the penalty here is 2 now moving on to the row we will see that minimum value is 2 and the next minimum is 3 so the penalty here is 1 one is the penalty similarly here minimum value is 4 and the next minimum is also 4 so the penalty here becomes 0 so for here minimum value 
is 3 and the next minimum is 4 so the penalty here is 1 and for this penalty will be 0 so now we need to select the maximum penalty here so maximum penalty is occurring in these two columns so we will select any one of them so I am selecting this column and in this column now I will look for the minimum cost cell so this is this is having the value 0 that means this is the minimum cost cell and we will try to allocate as much as possible in this particular cell so we can see here that the supply here is 20 and the demand is 30 so out of 30 20 can be fulfilled once this 20 is fulfilled this has been reduced to 0 that means no more allocation can be done in this row and this has been reduced to 10 so now we have one allocation here now for the remaining allocation we again need to calculate the penalties so we will again calculate penalties for row and column so let us see for this minimum value is 3 and the next minimum value is also 3 so the penalty here is 0 here the minimum value is 4 next minimum is 6 so the penalty here is 2 here minimum is 4 next minimum is 5 so penalty here is 1 here minimum is 2 next minimum is 4 so the penalty here is 2 and the row penalty does not change because the row does not change so among these values we can see that we have two values with maximum penalty so we can select any one of them i am selecting this one so what we'll see here the minimum cost here is in this particular cell which has having the transportation cost as four so we will try to allocate as much as possible in this cell so the demand is 10 and the supply is 30 so out of 30 10 can be fulfilled so this will become 0 and this will become 20 okay so now once this has been fulfilled that means no allocation can be done in this particular cell okay so now let us again calculate the penalties so as now the column does not change these penalty will remain same and the column penalties may, may change uh, row penalty may change so minimum is 2 next minimum is 3 penalty is 1 minimum is 4 next minimum is 4 penalty is 0 minimum is 3 next minimum is 4 penalty is 1 so this also does not change so now among these the maximum penalty is occurring here so we will select this column and in this column this is the lowest transportation cost so we will try to allocate here as much as possible so we can see that 20 is the demand and 40 is the supply so we can allocate 20 here that means we have 20 remaining here and this will be 0 this will be 0 that means no more allocation can be done in this column so again we need to calculate so this will be eliminated because this has fulfilled and now we again will calculate the value of penalty for each row so now the minimum value is 3 and the next minimum is 5 so the penalty here becomes 2 similarly minimum is 4 next minimum is 5 so the penalty here becomes 1 here the minimum is 3 next minimum is 4 so the penalty becomes 1 so now among these values 2 is the maximum penalty so we will select 2 and in this row we will select the minimum cost cell so 3 is the minimum cost active cell so here we can see that 50 is the demand and 20 is the supply that means out of 50 20 can be fulfilled so we have fulfilled so this will become 0 and this will become 30 so once this 20 has been allocated no more allocation can be done in this row and now we again need to calculate the penalty 
so let us calculate this will be 4 minus 5 4 and 5 so penalty is 1 3 and 4 penalty is 1 here minimum is 4 next minimum is 5 penalty is 1 here minimum is 3 next minimum is 4 penalty will be 1 so as we can see now that all the values are having same penalties so we can select any one of them i am selecting this one and if we select this we can see that this is having the least cost so we will try to allocate as much as possible here so we can see the supply the demand is 30 and the supply is 20 that means out of 30 20 can be put here so this has been reduced to 10 and this has been reduced to 0 so this is 0 that means no more allocation can be done in this row now here we can see that we only have two cells remaining in a single row and we do not have any choice but to allocate the remaining values in these particular cells so what we'll do is we will allocate these values here here 10 is here this will be 40 so this will become 0 this will also become 0 and 10 plus 40 is 50 so now this will be our basic feasible solution and what we'll do is we will try to find whether this basic feasible solution is optimal or not so let us start so i am just writing the allocation in the next matrix this will be 20 10 20 10 20 40 and 20 so we can see that we need to have m plus n minus 1 number of allocation to check the optimality and here we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 allocation and total m plus n number of uh, m plus n minus 1 number of allocations are 4 plus 3 uh, sorry 4 plus 4 8 minus 1 7 so we have 7 allocation that means we have exactly m plus n minus 1 number of independent allocation independent allocation means these are not forming loop okay so now we will check optimality by modified distribution method or we can call it modi method so let us start so in modified distribution method we need to calculate the values of certain variables so this will be u1 u2 u3 u4 similarly v1 v2 v3 v4 and to calculate this value we will take any of the variable equal to 0 any one of the variable equal to 0 so i am taking u1 equal to 0 now to find out the remaining values what we will see is we will need to remember that for allocated cell the value of cij that is unit transportation cost is equals to ui plus vj so here we can see that for this particular allocated cell the value of cij is 3 so 3 will be equal to 0 plus v1 or we can say that 0 plus v1 equal to 3 so 0 plus what equal to 3 so we need to understand that this will be equal to 3 0 plus 3 is 3 similarly for this allocated cell 0 plus what equal to 2 so we know that 0 plus 2 is 2 this is 3 3 plus what equal to 4 so we know that 3 plus 1 is 4 here 1 plus what equal to 5 so this will be 4 1 plus 4 is 5 similarly here 3 plus what equal to 3 so 3 plus 0 is 3 so this will be 0 now 0 plus what equal to 4 so this will be equal to 4 now 4 plus what equal to 0 so we know that 4 plus of minus 4 is equal to 0 now we have find all the values of u's and v's now what we need to calculate is we need to calculate the values at the non basic cell or we can call it empty cells so we need to calculate the value this which is 
for non allocated cell cij minus of ui plus vj so we'll see it from here cij is 6 unit transportation cost 6 minus 0 plus 4 that means 6 minus 4 this will be plus 2 similarly here 5 minus 0 plus 4 that is 5 minus 4 is plus 1 here m minus 1 plus 4 m minus 5 is plus m because m is very large value we have already considered this as very large value and this will be 4 minus 1 plus 2 4 minus 3 is plus 1 and this will be 4 minus 0 plus 4 4 minus 4 is 0 so this will be 0 and this is 4 minus 0 plus 2 4 minus 2 is plus 2 here it is 0 minus 4 plus 3 that means minus 1 minus minus of minus 1 is plus 1 so this will be plus 1 0 minus minus 4 plus 4 minus 4 plus 4 will be 0 so this will be 0 this is 0 minus of minus 4 plus 2 that means minus of minus 2 is plus 2 so we can see here that in all the non basic cells we are having the values 0 or greater than 0 this means that if i allocate any uh, if i allocate one unit in any of these cell my value of z that means transportation cost or production cost in this particular problem is going to either increase or remain same where we have the value as zero so we can see that in this problem we could not able to improve the solution uh, so this will be our optimal solution and for this optimal solution now we need to calculate the value of z minimum z minimum so z minimum will be equal to 20 into 3 60 60 into 60 plus 40 is 100 140 140 plus 200 140 plus 200 that is 340 340 plus 60 400 440 so the value of z will be coming as 440 so we can see that this is the minimum production cost and for this minimum production cost this is the optimum schedule and apart from this if we allocate in this particular cell we have zero value that means that we will have another combination of this without having increase or decrease in the value of objective function so this is the solution hope you like the lecture if you like the lecture please share the lecture have a nice day thank you